Another way that we can combine two statements is with what's called the disjunction of two statements, and that's by combining them with an or. And so when we combine two statements with an or, we would say that overall P or Q is going to be a true statement as long as at least one of the statements is true. And notice here that the notation we use for the or is um, we flip that symbol from the and upside down. So it looks like a V. So this means P or Q is how we would read that in mathematics. So um, let's take a look at some examples. And again, we'll use uh, truth tables as ways of gauging the overall truth of these joined statements by this or, by this disjunction or. So the first statement here is saying um, two is an even number or two is a prime number. So this statement two is an even number, that is true. This statement two is a prime number, that is true. And since at least one of them is true, that's gonna tell us that overall P or Q is true. So the statement or statement one, P or Q is a true statement in that case. Um, moving to the second sentence here, Colorado is a state or Europe is a country, um, right? We've got true for this, we've got false for that, but now when we combine things with a disjunction, as long as one of them is true, then overall that statement would be true. And so since the first statement, Colorado is a state, is true, then overall it is true that Colorado is a state or Europe is a country because the first one of those was, was true. In um, the sentence three, um, we've got three is an even number, that is false. And three is a prime number that is true. So since one of those statements is true altogether, this disjunction is true. And um, statement four was um, the earth is flat or the earth is the center of the universe. Both of those statements are false. So altogether, this disjunction is false since both of those things are false. So to just summarize truth, falseness of or statements, disjunctions, um, as long as at least one of the statements is a true, then overall the disjunction of the two statements will be true. And so I just want to be careful about this distinction between an inclusive or an exclusive or. Um, so that when we use the or in mathematics, we use it the same as the or in everyday language. And we would call both of those um, an inclusive or, meaning that either um, one of them could be true, we don't need both of them to be true. Um, there are some examples of exclusive ors where um, it's not possible for both of the statements to be true. Um, so let me just kind of illustrate this difference between an exclusive versus an inclusive or. So let's consider the question, do you want coffee or do you want tea? And this would be an example of an exclusive or because we wouldn't expect both of those things to be true, right? You would either want coffee or you would want tea. And if we consider the other informal question, do you want cream or sugar? Um, this certainly could be an example of an inclusive or because um, both would be a perfectly acceptable answer. It certainly is possible that you want both cream and sugar. Um, so in mathematics, we don't make a distinction here. We use the inclusive or, so it's possible that you could have um, both of those statements true. Okay, and then one last concept I want to introduce you to before you give the quiz a shot and we delve into these ideas a little bit deeper together in class is this idea of what a negation is. So given a statement P, um, we can define the negation of P, which we write with this little squiggle, uh, a tilde, you might know from Spanish, but um, we would call this the negation symbol of P. Um, and it is a statement that is false if P is true and true if P is false. 
So let's take a look at some examples to illustrate um, negations. And so let's consider the following statement. Uh, let's let P be I drank coffee today. And so there are um, several ways that we could try expressing the negation of this statement. So let's take a look at some of those. Um, we could say, for example, it is not true that I drank coffee today. So that is one way we could negate the statement, I drank coffee today. Um, we could do it by saying um, it is false that I drank coffee today, clearly saying not true and false are um, just restating the same idea. Um, and maybe most clearly we could state this as I did not drink coffee today. Okay, so if the original statement was I drank coffee today, then the negation is I did not drink coffee today. Um, and so one way that you can think about the negation is that it describes exactly how the original statement can be false. So if the original statement was, um, I drank coffee today, then how could that statement be false? It would be false if um, I did not drink any coffee today. So that's what we um, mean by that. And um, we could use truth tables here. The truth tables are um, pretty, pretty basic in this sense in that if P is true, then the negation of P is false. And if P is false, then the negation of P would be true. Um, so that's a wrap on the content that I'd like you to think about um, before coming to class. Give the quiz a shot. You've got multiple attempts to try and get the questions on the quiz correct. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see everybody um, in class and we'll delve deeper into these ideas.